Charisma Quotient. I'm your host, Kim Seltzer, a dating and makeover expert, where I will help you build confidence, make connections, and find love from the outside in. Hey, I just wanted to quickly share something with you before we get into the show. If you haven't heard, I am excited to share my new live upcoming co-ed workshop. It's called Conversation Hacks That Convert to Dates. And it's coming up Wednesday, February 21st, depending on when you're listening to this. This is a live event where I will be teaching you the exact process to go from boring to playful in your conversations when you are trying to get out there and date. So if you're stuck in the loop of painful dates or boring conversations and feeling completely awkward in your body, your mind, well and just exhausted the thought of small talk, then you need to join this interactive workshop to help boost that sexy confidence when you are dating. But space is limited. We are approaching this soon. So make sure you click the link you see in the show notes to save your spot or go to stophatingdating.com. All right, now back to the show. Oh, dating, as we're talking about all this, meeting new people, going to crowded bars and constantly feeling like you have to be on. If you are an introvert or a high achiever, that probably sounds like your worst nightmare. (laughs) And if this is you, then you already know there is a real struggle when it comes to this stuff. And opening up to someone new just feels exhausting. I mean, Doesn't the thought of small talk and putting yourself out there sound absolutely awful to you? It's probably true if you are somebody who tends to be in their head a lot and just wants to skip all of this and get to the boyfriend or girlfriend. And here's the other thing. You are probably a little too serious. Look, so I am sure you have that list of what you're looking for in a partner. I would actually predict that for you. I mean, if you're successful, you're probably outcome driven and you have goals and aspirations outlined for yourself, even in the love department. And it's not necessarily a bad thing. And you know what I'm talking about. And it's the lists where your must haves, including good looks, intelligence, success, um, blah, 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 blah. The the list could go on and on. But here's something that I'm going to challenge you on that you probably don't have on your list. Do you have playfulness? on your list. If you really stop and think about the good dates or interactions you've had, have you thought about how fun they are? And if you haven't, you should. In fact, being fun and playful, both in your energy and your conversations, are the top attributes that people inherently look for when dating and ultimately landing a partner. This is research-based. This is not just me talking. And studies have shown that a sense of fun is more important to many people than whether someone has a degree or are super intelligent or based in religion, like none of that is as important. And other research has also demonstrated that playfulness in adults is a desirable trait in sexual selection. So you might keep making dating and relating more complicated and treating it like a serious chore when in reality, people just want something more laid back with more levity. I mean, that's what we're all really looking for in the end. What we're looking for is fun and the way someone makes us feel, even as highly successful introverts or achiever that you are. And so you might be asking, well, what is the purpose of having fun? Like, why can't you just skip all this? You know, does this sound familiar? So I want to share a a client story with you because it relates to exactly what we're talking about here. Um, this person, the word fun wasn't even in her language. It was completely a foreign word. Now on paper, she was a catch. She was beautiful, intelligent. She went to an Ivy League school 
super involved in her community, high achiever and worked for a tech company. So she was super analytical and and also a little more left brain type, right? And she attacked dating like she did in every other aspect of her life. She prepared her list of non-negotiables and qualifications of a man in front of her while dating online. She had perfected a system as she was dating. She had rehearsed all the questions she wanted to cover on dates, yet she still couldn't get past the first or second date and was left with the feeling of having a lack of chemistry and got the message from men that they found her intimidating. Now, she was very confused because in her mind, she did everything right. She checked all the boxes, of what was supposed to be done to attract a man. She had done a lot of therapy. Like she tried everything. And that was where her problem was. She was so busy being busy, running her dating life like a boardroom, focused on facts and methodology that she lacked the ability to just have fun and let go and be open. And she stated that being silly on a date felt childish and stupid and she didn't understand the point and that it was a waste of time. So she also admitted that she never really learned how to play when she was young because her family and the Asian culture background, that just wasn't reinforced. And studying and succeeding is how love was accomplished. So really, the primary focus of our coaching together was teaching her how to be more playful, more in her body, being okay with fun, whimsical conversation that were not laden with boring facts. And she came to one of my flirt workshops, and she started to learn the fundamentals of being magnetic and fun. And then she practiced it with men in the class and in her everyday life. And after a while, she started being more comfortable with her new flirty femininity and started attracting men everywhere she went and progressed past the first and second dates. In fact, by the end, She attracted a great guy and she started dating him consistently. She couldn't believe it and actually ended up loving the fun, loving the fun. And that is what dating became for her. So at the end of the day, it's not about the facts or the outcome that makes a great date. It's the feeling your date has with you, which you can create with a little practice. Now, It's important. You're probably asking why this is all important. It's not about the facts. It's about the fun. Okay. I said that already. Because what you say isn't even as important as how you make someone feel. When you're laid back, curious, like to explore new things, enjoy playful conversations and interactions, potential dates will want to be with you more. End of story. I know, again, it sounds probably very simple and elementary, yet it's the thing that so many people don't do, and and you all are making it really complex, and it's not that complex. And so you're probably thinking, Kimmy, this all seems pretty silly and frivolous. There is more to a person than just being fun, which seems pretty superficial. And besides, I'm too busy to be wasting time having conversations on apps or in person that don't lead anywhere. I mean, what's the purpose? Or you might listen to this and say, Kimmy, I don't even know how to be fun and goofy. But do you like when your date is fun and charismatic? So just ask yourself that. Why would it be different for you and about you? It's also important to think about what being playful Like if you think that being playful is hard, like what about that is challenging for you? Is it that you never learned how to do it? Like the client that I described, or are you worried about how you might come across? You feel awkward. You feel silly. You worry about what other people think or feel. But as, as, and as for the time element, you might be so busy being busy that you are actually wasting more time than actually taking the time to build rapport to really get to know someone and make that connection. Because at the end of the day, it's not about the facts or the outcome that makes a great date. It's the feeling your date 
has with you, which you can create with a little practice. So from awkward first dates to entering social situations, there are common obstacles that introverts and high achievers face when trying to find a romantic partner. And I want to share some of these common challenges and how they may impact your dating life. Okay. Overall, the first impression and attraction phase, which in my opinion is the most important phase, because if you can't if you can't get past that phase, none of all of this other inside job and juicy stuff doesn't matter. But the reason why these this first phase tends to be difficult. It makes it really hard to make that connection and also be open to possibilities. All right. So the first, the very first challenge is that you are slow to warm up and you take longer than others to open up. So introverts are notorious for being misperceived as standoffish, bitchy, unapproachable, but in reality, you are just a little slow to warm up. You like to take some extra time to warm up to new people, and that includes with your date. Introverts are not the type to wear their hearts on their sleeves usually, and instead you often have your, you know, your guard up and you take a lot of one-on-one time for you to finally let down those walls. This can make dating really difficult, especially when the other person wants to get to know you more and They're willing to share, yet you're not. So in worst case scenarios, a person might mistake your hesitancy as you not being interested in them or in a relationship, which just isn't true. The second challenge is that introverts and high achievers don't just crave quiet nights at home. They need them to recharge. So there's a different kind of recharge that you might need than other people. For an extrovert, hearing I need a night alone can make them think that you're going to end things or not be interested in them, you know, for some reason. But uh, introverts alone time has nothing to do with others and has everything to do with them needing to recharge their internal batteries. And that's different for everyone. There may be some of you listening to this and saying, well, I just need a couple hours of downtime and then I'm good to go. Some of you might need days and that's up to you. But the important thing about that is know that about yourself and try to plan dating around that so that you have that downtime before you get back out there or go on a date. So this could lead to misinterpretation big time because maybe upon first meeting someone, your date might think that you're not interested or have low energy. The third challenge is that you have this kind of inherent fear of settling. High achievers have high standards for themselves, and they often bring those same standards into their dating life. And so you know what you want, and what you want, you know, in a partner, sometimes then you focus on what you don't want, and you're not willing to settle for less. And while there's nothing wrong with having high standards, it can make it difficult to find a good match on, say, the dating apps or when you're meeting somebody, where people often present in a curated version of themselves, right? And and, and also these high standards that lead to the fear of settling, because you don't want to make the wrong decision. If you're a high achiever, you want to achieve something. You want to get the A plus. You want to perform. And if you get it wrong, that that's going to devastate you. And then that leads to a cycle of perpetual dissatisfaction and disappointment. So the fear of settling for someone who doesn't meet your standards can be debilitating and cause you to push potential matches away. There could be someone amazing for you, but there might be one little thing that you get scared of and you don't give it a chance. This will lead to reluctance reluctance to commit to anyone and a constant search for someone who meets the high standards, which often is a quest that just goes on forever. All right. And a fourth challenge is that you tend to be more reserved and guarded with your feelings on personal matters. So you also have to 
crack that intimidation code because a lot of people might misread this again. Introverts and high achievers know they can be tough cookies to figure out. And since they tend to be a little more reserved and sometimes come across as more intimidating, this makes you less likely to engage in conversation or even pursue something. And while they know in their minds, you might know in your mind that they're plenty loud, especially since you may not express how you're feeling or might give signals with your body language or facial expressions that you are upset or angry. So it's frustrating to be constantly asked, what's the matter? And have to keep explaining that being quiet doesn't equate to being sad or worse yet, you don't get asked out again because there was a sense of intimidation felt through your quietness. Again, when you're meeting someone for the first time, people don't know how you're feeling. All they know is what's written on your face. That's why good communication or knowing just more about yourself and when you have the energy to put yourself out there and be more animated is so important in in this process. All right. The fifth challenge you might have is you just hate small talk and find social interactions exhausting. Most introverts and high achievers are in their head and are constantly thinking about what to say. And you're focused on an outcome and trying to figure out what other people might be thinking. And you also might find loud environments and a lot of people overstimulating which makes the thought of going out and making conversation, again, exhausting. So you also tend to lean towards being too serious in conversations versus telling stories and being silly and having just a sense of levity overall. This is a really important one. The final challenge, and of course, if you have been listening to my podcast or know me at all, you know what I'm about to say, but dun, 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 you tend to not flirt or play. The thought of you introverts and high achievers of flirting and putting yourself out there probably just horrifies you. And many introverted people fear rejection, which is why you may take a long time to warm up and read the room. Flirting is a playful energy that draws people to you without the attachment of an outcome. And if you are in your head and you're worrying about what's next, no wonder flirting seems so hard. But the good news about all of this, okay, I don't want to say all these challenges out loud to depress you. It's actually to pinpoint some reasons why dating has been so hard. And now that you're more aware of this, now that you have a sense of it being just who you are, you can overcome these challenges, which I help people with all the time. It's just because you struggle in these areas doesn't mean you can't learn these skills and make dating fun. These are all skills. And I've had so many people who deemed themselves as introverts and they call themselves high achievers and not that you're not. But by the time I get done, by the time they take my workshops or the time they start really working on this stuff, they realize these are a lot of just skills that they've never learned. And if you have a propensity towards anxiety and that's why maybe you're a high achiever and even introverts have a lot of anxiety, what is anxiety? Anxiety is uncertainty. And maybe you grew up in a very unpredictable environment where there was a lack of certainty. So a lot of the characteristics and the personality that you have today just really stem from you protecting yourself. And it was, you know, kind of your coping mechanism growing up. So whatever got cultivated and that you learned, you can also unlearn and learn how to be different. So that's that's the hope. And that's what I want you to really hear. All right. I have a letter that I wanted to read an email. I can't believe I just said a letter. What is this? 1980. An email that I got. Um, that just highlights uh, somebody who definitely struggles with this. And let's see if I can give her some advice. 
She says, hi, Kimmy. I would like to get into a long-term relationship, but I am really experiencing dating fatigue big time. I'm not getting good matches online. My texting style tends to be somewhat dry and boring, and I don't know how to flirt. How can I have more fun and attract a man that I want? And this is from Beth. Oh, Beth. Okay. Well, first of all, dating fatigue is real. It's not just you, especially when you are spending so much energy trying to figure out in your head the right things to say, searching endlessly for the right matches, and getting into these factual LinkedIn exchanges that require a lot of headspace. So no wonder you're exhausted and you feel defeated. But here's the thing. The truth is, when you learn to let go and stop spending so much of your energy trying to do and say the right things, dating will be more fun and you'll find your connections full of chemistry and they will feel more authentic too. So here, here's what I want you to try. Number one, just take an online dating fast for a while, like maybe give yourself three weeks, four weeks, and instead Start engaging in spontaneous conversations in real life, IRL, in, with strangers. I know that sounds awful, but just do it for the sake of an exercise and do childlike activities. So ask people silly questions at the grocery store, go to a park and run with some kids, turn on some music and dance, you know, get comfortable being silly as well. Don't really have a plan of what you're going to say just kind of be. The second thing is when you do go back online, treat it like a party. Stop overthinking your matches, start engaging in fun conversations, and just see if you can connect in a playful way. Don't get attached to the outcome. Don't go online thinking that you're going to, you know, get your next boyfriend. Just go on and see if you can connect in a whole different way and be more present. The other thing is get in your body more, you know, take maybe some classes, maybe pole dancing, belly dancing, move your body, get anything you can do to get more in the body and less in your head is going to be the better. And for sure, do things that are more playful. Maybe you want to take an improv class. Maybe you want to, you know, watch funny movies, something that gets you laughing and having fun. Cause that, that's, going to help you have more playful conversations that will convert to more dates. The more you let go, the more present you will be, and you won't be fatigued with all this dating that you're doing. You'll instead have fun. So you listening also might relate to this, and you too have the right to let go and have fun. At the end of the day, remember, it's not about the facts or the outcome that makes a great date or an interaction or a relationship. It's the feeling your date has with you, which you can create, but you just need a little practice. All right, I hope that inspired you today. Thanks for joining me. This has been the Charisma Quotient. I'm your host, of course, Kimmy Seltzer. And remember, you can build confidence, make connections, and find love from the outside in. Make sure you go to my site, KimmySeltzer.com. And if you want to take it one step further, as I said in the beginning, if you didn't hear it, I'm going to say it again. I have just the workshop for you coming up soon. It's February 21st called Conversation Hacks That Convert to Dates. This is perfect if you are that introvert or high achiever. It's a co-ed interactive workshop to give you the best tips for confidently navigating the social scene without anxiety and uncertainty. It's more than just about dating. This is a way of life. It's about changing the way you mingle, present yourself, and connect daily so you can interact with confidence. Just go to the link you see in the show notes to register. Or if you're listening to this, just go to stophatingdating.com. That's stophatingdating.com. But hurry, seats are limited, and we only have a few days until showtime. I'd love to see you there live in the Zoom room. And remember... Working on you is working on your dating life. That's all for now. 